Be a part of Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Starting at $1 a month, you can enjoy Going In Raw ad-free, gain access to the daily 30-minute Going In Raw post-show, exclusive merchandise, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today. Click the link in the description. Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley, Roderick Strong, and you're listening to Going In Raw, baby. What's up, it's your girl Sasha Banks, legit boss, and you are watching Going In Raw. You like that? This is Shayna Baszler, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up? This is the most must-see WWE superstar of all time and his lovely, gorgeous wife. Marie. <laughs> and you are going in SmackDown Live. This is the glorious one, Bobby Roode, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, guys. Charlotte, and you're watching Going In Raw. What's up? It's the moonwalking, trash talking princess of Staten Island. I want to remind you all that Mela is money, and you're watching Going In Raw. Hey, this is Shisuke Nakamura. Shisuke watching Going In the Raw. This is the knockout artist, Cassius Ono, and you're Going In Raw. Hey, friend Dill Steve here. And Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you need to be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. And available wherever fine podcasts are. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notify bell next to it. If you're watching us on the YouTubes, make sure you're always getting your new Going In Raw notifications. We're also available uh, on the community tab here on the YouTube channel. Uh, and uh, if you, uh, I think you have to like sort of dig into your notification settings to make sure you get notified for the community tab. Seems awfully complicated. But if you do all that, it's, it's cool. Like we post like question threads on the community, through, uh, polls, mm -hmm. info. Mm -hmm. We got a lot of stuff coming up. We've got a takeover reaction live stream tomorrow. Uh, this is going up Saturday. This that, evening. Yeah, this evening, late this afternoon. Unless you're one of the awesome 270 friendos that are watching this live, in which case it's on Friday and it's going to be tomorrow night on Saturday. Oh, it hurts my head to think about it. During takeover, we're going to be live streaming our reactions. First time we've ever done that for takeover. So that's yes. fun. Uh, and then, of course, on Sunday, it's Survivor Series. Uh, we're going to be live streaming our reactions there. Uh, for those of you new uh, to Going In Raw, we do not show the actual TV at any point during the live streams. No, we don't do that. We just show us reacting to it. Yeah. And then usually the next day I'll do like a little super cut of our reactions. Um, so in case you can't miss the, you can't uh, make the live stream, mm -hmm. and you or just you want to see. sit through the whole three or five hour thing. You just want to get the best bits. Yeah, I'll do that. I got no problem with that. Anyways, uh, we're there. We're in the realm of audio podcasts. Uh, if you're listening to us on an audio podcast app, uh, leave us a rating, review, or comment. Really does help going in raw grow and get exposure. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also available on the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Got a couple new patrons in over the last 24 hours Johnny Patriza, TJ Ridgeway, Liam Siggers, and Poopy J Styles. Do you think that's his real name? No, I believe I, I can't remember the name of the individual who, uh, who mentioned that name to us earlier oh, oh, during our oh, oh, We Book Survivor oh. series, but that's the name of his creative character. Cool thing is uh, all these patrons are $1 patrons, and you would be surprised, absolutely shocked to see how far $1 can go. Uh, we've got some exciting announcements about our Patreon coming up in the new year. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be adding some stuff mm -hmm. at that $1 level. That's Correct. very exciting. Very. Uh, at the $5 level, you get a daily post show. We'll be doing a post show uh, after uh, today's uh, live run. And if you're a $5 patron, you can go back and watch it. If you're watching this on Saturday, be like, oh, there's a Friday bonus episode. Cool. Right on. So, yay. Yay. Um, that's that's pretty much it. We're at Pro Wrestling Tees and FriendoMarket.com. Yes. Uh, before we get into the news that we want to talk about, a lot of people in chat, uh, who is this? Uh, Michael Andrews uh, mentioned uh, here in chat, a lot of people are talking about the Ellsworth thing. And uh, I, we're not going to, I'm, I'm going to make one, I'm going to say one thing about it because he said, you know, a lot of people come to us for wrestling news. Yeah. I don't, I don't personally consider this news, but it's some, it's a thing that has happened that a lot of people are talking about. Um, there are very strong allegations that he has been sending nude pictures of himself to an underage girl. Uh, the evidence is pretty damning. Uh, however, it's gross. I don't want to talk about it. So that's all we're going to say. It's gross. I don't want to talk about it. Don't ask me about it anymore. Yeah, don't ask but me I, I totally gross. get that, you know, it's gross. if people are talking about it, they'll they come to us. We can't just say, oh, nah, nah, nah. but uh, it's gross. We don't want to talk about it. I mean, that's one of those things where it's like, 
Well, what do you want us to say? It's, it's gross. gross. We don't want to talk about it. So just, I don't, don't. And that's the extent of it. What we're going to do about there's it. There's not a lot of deep. There's not a lot of depth No, it's there. gross. It's just gross. It's gross. <laughs> it's I gross. saw more of Ellsworth today than I want to. Gross. Disgusting. Gross. So, yeah. That's Anyways. the end of it. Let's yeah. move on to some other news. Yeah, let's do that. Yes, let's do that. First, man, Cody's really, uh, he's really making the, the news cycles every week. He is, uh, he, he is, yeah. he, he, he has a knack. He knows how to get his name himself out there. Yeah. In the news. Exactly. So, so uh, was it late last week, early this week? Early this week, I think, we, talk, we, we uh, reported on Cody's injury. He said he was in the ring, teasing the t-shirt toss, pop in the knee. Mm-hmm. Um, he since got the MRI results, torn meniscus. Okay. Um, uh, and uh, apparently he won't miss any shows. No, he's got, he, needs, he needs to go under the knife. He needs to get the uh, orthoscopic surgery. Probably if it's a torn meniscus, go ahead and clip yeah. that uh, hunk that got tore off. Yeah. That's the simpler of the two operations. The more uh, uh, invasive one is called, I believe, microfracture surgery, where oh, they dear. actually drill holes in your knee and let the blood come up and replace the cartilage, the meniscus that had been torn. But that's like a longer recuperation time. Kenny. Uh, when he tore his meniscus, got it uh, clipped, he's only out for like 18 days. Which uh, Meltzer said uh, it probably was Completely not Completely inadvisable. Yeah, exactly. Um, but Cody, that. I guess th- the final battle is in about a month. Mm-hmm. And he's got a match against Jay Lethal for the Ring of Honor title. And he said that's his last one for Ring and of Honor. And he's going to win that title and take it with him to free agency. He's going to do what CM Punk should have did when he beat John Cena. Uh, nobody really cares about the Ring of Honor title, so it won't really but matter. But people like Cody. Yeah, people do. Like Any as far as what Cody's going to do, I'm joking about the Ring of Honor title. It's great. Yeah, they just. I feel like they need to. They, we're going to talk about it, but they they really need to reload. Yeah, they might really have to. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, Melser talked about uh, Cody's potential future plans in this week's newsletter. What Melser had to say: "Quote Cody outright said that he wants to work more in New Japan in 2019. Melser didn't source this mm-hmm. unless he heard it straight from Cody. I don't know. Um, he's already said doing a G1 is something that he wants to do." But last year, his filming arrow made that impossible. But he wants to do more than just the big shows like he did in 2018 with the idea that he wants to improve as a wrestler. Mm. And you want to improve as a wrestler. New Japan. Uh, I can't talk. We talked a lot New today. New Japan. New Japan is the place to work. Thanks to everybody for coming out for the uh, We Book Survivor Series yes. today, too. So that's cool. I love hearing that he wants to improve. That's just really interesting. He's been wrestling for how long now? A long time. A very long time. Um, and you know, New Japan, hey, if you want to improve his wrestler, he's hanging out with the right people. Yep. And he, uh, he's, he's very high on working for New Japan. Yes. That's the place to do it if it's, you want to be a better wrestler. I can't remember where I read this. It might have been. Is the, he going to be a young lion? No, the Jericho Cruise uh, podcast of Talk Excursion. of Jericho. Where he talked about getting the invitation to join Bullet Club. And I'm paraphrasing. My memory is not very good these days. Um, he said something along the lines of it was like, it was like intimidating for him mm. because everybody, you know, like uh, Kenny and the bucks, um, they're all best bout machines. Well, they're all, as he put it, I believe again, paraphrasing way better wrestlers than he was. Mm. So I think he enters Cody is great. Awesome at the character stuff. Yeah. He's an awesome character. Yeah. He's a good wrestler. Yeah. He's capable of putting on really good matches. Um, but, uh, it, it, it he, I feel like he knows his strengths. He knows what he needs to improve on. Mm-hmm. And he, there's no ego about it. Yeah. In that department. That's an interesting thing to me. I wonder, like, specifically at, at, his, at his level, as long as he's been in the game, how do you continue to improve? You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm, I, that, that, that's a question I'd love to ask. A, a person like him who's in a position where he has – you know, the, the world is basically his oyster mm-hmm. um, in terms of uh, professional wrestling. And if he wants to improve as a wrestler, like at his level, how do you keep on doing that? It's, it's, it's a question that I think it'd be interesting to to ask. When, that's the first thing that popped in my mind when, yeah, when yeah, I yeah. saw that. It's like, oh, that's really interesting. Like, you know, he, he, he's been everywhere. He's done a lot of stuff. Um, he's how, made a what, ton of money. What is the process for continuing to improve and, and, to, and to sharpen his game and put him at the level in terms of putting on those stellar matches mm-hmm. um, like Kenny Omega and mm-hmm. like the Young Bucks and guys like Okada? Can I would think, on. I mean, first and foremost, it's got to be storytelling and psychology. Because you look at Okada, and Okada is, you know, I can make the case that he's the best wrestler in the entire world. And he's athletic, 
but he doesn't necessarily do anything showy. Yeah. He's just a really good storyteller in the ring. Yeah, but no, I'm, I, I understand that. Like, and, and you're right, but the big question is like, and only he could answer this or any professional, only professional wrestler really answer this is how. Yeah, no. Like, I would, I, 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 I There's something magical about pro wrestling. Yeah. Where two guys in there can do these choreographed fights, but it, it's capable of bringing out Mm -hmm. genuine emotion in the viewers. Yeah. And there's a magic to it. Yeah. And I think tapping into and capturing that magic is kind of the, the mystery of pro wrestling. Yeah. So some people are in tune with that magic. Some people are more so than others. Um, that's what it seems. I mean, it's, it's almost like asking a filmmaker, how do you improve as a filmmaker? You know, yeah. it's like, obviously like the number one answer is obviously you just make movies. Yeah. You improve like, by doing exactly. But like, how do you sharpen your skills to become a guy? Like, you know, we're both big fans of Paul Thomas mm-hmm. Anderson and it's like to go from boogie nights, which is a fantastic oh, movie. Yeah. yeah. But to something like, did you see his last one? No, I still haven't seen Phantom Thread. It's so good. I know. I need it's to check it out. It's so flipping I good. Need to check it out. And it's the kind of thing that's so mature that it's like, God, how does he even do, like, how do you do that? Yeah. How do you get like what you're trying to achieve? Like there's a synthesis between filmmaker and, and film, you yeah. know? Well, I mean, he, he, he was a cinematographer on that too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. So I don't know. Like it's, it's one of those things where it's like, you know, I, I'm, I'm legitimately curious. That's one thing that I really wish wrestling is one of those weird things that like, you know, so I don't, I mean, even, even like, you know, musicians never seem to be shy about, I mean, certain musicians, there's never any like, oh, you can't come into the studio and watch the process. Musicians will open up about the process. Filmmakers have commentary tracks, yeah, books are written, totally open up about the process. scripts are open. But if I'm, if I'm getting to where you're going, it's very rare to hear a pro wrestler really get into the nuts and bolts about the process of what it they is do. still such a protected thing. Yeah. It and is such what, a protected thing. That's what I mean about the mystery of it. Yeah. Like, like we can watch a match and put together how the story is being told based on this person is doing this, this person is reacting this way, this is happening, and then now this is happening. But to be in there, to get a sense of what it's like to be in there, in that room when that's all being put together, we don't get to see that very often. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's, you're, you're right. It's, it's the nuts and bolts. That's why I really love Breaking Ground so mm-hmm. much, because they really did let you behind the scenes, and they got so close to really examining the nuts and bolts. Yep. Um, it's just they did stop short with that. But, uh, but yeah, it, it, is, it is definitely interesting that in this day and age, and that's there's still that sort of defensiveness from a lot of wrestlers whenever, you know, and granted, I know I understand that like so much of Twitter is toxic and the way certain fans approach wrestlers as if they do know better, as if they do know exactly what they're talking about instead of instead of Just allowing being... the fans to be sort of educated about things, there is and it's it's sad because people who legitimately are curious and want to be educated, they sort of get sometimes I feel painted with the same brush as the assholes out there yeah, yeah, who yeah, are just yeah, belligerent yeah. about yeah, how they think yeah. things should be. There's a difference between being hypercritical, being critical, mm-hmm. and then there's also a difference just being inquisitive and wanting to gain more knowledge about yeah. something you enjoy. Yeah. yeah, no, I agree. It is a very, it is a very like defensive thing sometimes that I get mm. um, or that I witness. And I think even despite the fact that wrestlers acknowledge that for the most part, kayfabe is the thing of the past. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It still seems like there's, there's, there's a lot of... I wonder if they value the mystery of it. I think they do. I think they do. I think there is that that sort of a legacy that I think you're mm-hmm. right. You're Even probably right K, about they, that. They, yeah. they, they value the mystery of how it's all put together. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, speaking of other free agents, along with Cody. Ring of Honor might have a lot of them. Yeah, there seems to be a lot of them. You know, we just talked about Cody. Of course, it's been widely reported that Hangman Page and the Young Bucks will likewise be all be free agents by the end of this year. Um, but also, you can include, according to Dave Meltzer, Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian, um, two thirds of SCU. SCU. Um, and according to Silas Young himself, he's a soon to be free agent as well, telling Wrestling Inc., quote, You can never say never in wrestling. WWE's had a thing in the past couple of years where they've been signing up a lot of talent. My contract's up at the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> Emphasis of Larson's. I'm not opposed to talking to either side. When it comes down to it, it's a business at the end of the day. You got to do what's best for you and your family. I love ROH. 
I feel like there's things there that I'd like to accomplish still. Saying that, nothing set in stone. He wants to go to WWE. He really wants to go to, to be WWE. the first. Uh, I want to go to NXT I and know. be the last real man Imagine there. Imagine him tweeting about throwing up punks at pork chop <laughs> whilst a member of NXT. Yeah. Because it could happen. That could come to fruition someday. Not everybody gets to go to NXT and <laughs> WWE. <laughs> I mean, I mean, dude, here's the thing. There's so, And I like Silas Young. I think he's great. I think he's, I think he's great. But I do think that, like, there's the thing that we always talk about, WWE snapping up so much talent, there is at some point a limit. Yeah. <laughs> at a certain point, there is a limit. Yeah. Um, and so, but that's great. I mean, hey, if, if, if we find out tomorrow that, he, they're, that NXT wants him, wouldn't surprise me. No. It wouldn't. I mean, Isn't he younger than us? Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah. It's a great gimmick he's got going there. Oh, yeah. Older than us. I know. <laughs> That's his gimmick. I know. It's like old old guy who's actually young. I know. Um, so, yeah, uh, what do you think about uh, Kazarian and uh, Christopher Daniels? Again, they're old. Yeah, they are old. They're, in great they're about shape, our though. age, yeah. See, I wonder if – I'm not sure. Again, you always point this out. It's like, well, what do they want? Mm-hmm. What do they want, you know? Um, cause th- at their age, and maybe this is something they would want. I could see them going to NXT and having like a cash is no type role. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. They seem to be having such a good time. Oh, I know with that SCU thing and being mm-hmm, the elite mm-hmm. that I don't know. Or I should say, the sorry, per- the performance aspect of what they do is to still seems so vital to them. I should say from looking from the outside. Yeah. I should say. If they were to go to WWE, that would probably be would the role they would be offered. So. At this but juncture. look at Danny Burch. He's like 60 oh, years I know. old. I know. So I don't know. I look at certain guys and I'm like, man, I don't know. Like, hey, that's and that's one thing we say about NXT's tag division. Let's say they brought in Daniels and Kazarian as a Danny tag Burch team. is only 36 years old. I <laughs> lose 46. Those guys. Are well, how old is Chris Daniels? What 41? He's in his 40s, 45, maybe. Um, NXT's tag division is he's 48. Wow, NXT's tag division is not the strongest in the world, and no. so I could see them bringing in. I mean, Kazarian and Daniels Kazarian's are in 41. Kazarian and okay. Because Aaron and Daniels are, are fairly elite guys. When yeah. you look at the end of the non WWE tag team scene, like their names, I mean, granted they they'll wrestle as singles and then mm-hmm. they'll wrestle as mm-hmm. a tag team, mm-hmm. but their names are up there. Oh yeah, you know their names are up there. It wouldn't surprise me if they if they did. And if I mean Daniels especially being forty eight, I don't know. I mean I, I've never heard any interviews with him where he talked about it one way or the other because I don't really I don't know, but. That I guess wouldn't surprise me if it, I mean at some point you're gonna start looking at your post wrestling life. Yeah. I would yeah. think. Yeah. Unless he's one of those guys who's just like, man, I'm in great shape. What the fuck do I have to worry yeah. about? What's gonna happen? I'm in great after shape, wrestling? having a great time. Yeah. What I'm making good money. Why should I'll I care? worry about that tomorrow when it, yeah. when I have to worry about it? The time comes when I'm not in great shape, and not having a great time, not making great money. Then that's when. Right. I'll hang exactly. Him up. But as up. as as far as. Like, it's weird, but at 48, I don't think he's really ever been more popular in terms of his name recognition. No, I don't think so. Either. You know? Yeah. So, like, I don't know. I think it'd be great. No, it'd be interesting for sure. Yeah. Um, in New Japan news, apparently there's a huge shakeup on the horizon Ooh. behind the commentary desk, at least oh. for the access broadcast. That's not surprising. Yes. Yeah, you, um, can't, you can't just walk out into the ring trying to make yourself part of the story. And expect no, you to try to, to beat up Jay White. You can't do that. Um, so, it looks like. Good old JR, Jim Ross, and Josh Barnett are done as hosts of the Access broadcast. Dave Meltzer states that they were uh, doing their last voiceovers this week for uh, the New Japan Access show and added, quote, we've had contradictory stories of the reasons why, but obviously is either a New Japan decision or an Access decision. Although the first word we got was it was the former, a New Japan decision. Mm -hmm. Um, the situation with Ross isn't clear, but based on tweets by both Ross and Adam Swift of Access, where Swift thanks Ross, it looks like he won't be turning in April. One week ago, Ross was going to be out at the end of December for reasons mentioned last week that WWE was not going to allow him to re-sign a new deal with his deal ending at the end of the year, but he was to return most likely in April when his WWE deal expired. 
Nobody has said anything, and Access officials have told us they expect to release information regarding the announcers going forward at some point next week. Um, they've received uh, quite a bit of heat for their work on the Access productions, um, including from wrestlers themselves. Yeah. Tom Tonga took them to task for not knowing any of the storylines. Yeah. Um, we've watched some where JR doesn't really know who the wrestlers are. How long have they been doing this? A couple years, maybe. That's so. That's so. It, that that never failed to surprise me. That even after like, even at, we've only been watching New Japan for like a, uh, almost two years now. Yeah, two years. It'd be about two years at uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Yeah. And granted, I don't watch all the shows because the the time difference and how much time I have in my schedule. Mm-hmm. But I, I pretty much know most of the names of the guys. Oh yeah. Like I can point out when they're. I mean, look, man, commentary is not an easy thing to do. Oh, I God, imagine. no. I oh, it's, 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 I, I assume it's, 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 it's really tough. And, and But it did sometimes come off, like, especially JR was like. Was like, like he, you don't tell me watch the, pr- the product is when he had to do commentary. Yeah, on it. which is fine. Like, everybody's busy. But, yeah. you, but still, you watch a lot of the product because you do commentary on mm-hmm. it. So that was weird. And then the Josh Barnett getting in the in the ring. That yeah, was, no. That was a little weird. That was really weird. <laughs> that was strange. Like, why do you just interject yourself into the show? I understand if you're you're trying to back up your, your commentary partner. But do that backstage after the show is done. Yeah. Jay don't, White's small. You could just lay him out. Barnett's a badass. Yeah. That dude could Legit. Yeah. Legit. Yeah. yeah. Don't interrupt the show. Yeah. Don't. A no. weird. It is weird. I do hope it's not about that, though. I hope it's more about... I, I like referencing that because it was hilarious. It was weird. Because it's like, what is that guy even doing right now? That's funny to me. Um, I mean, the, the, I, I would think that this is probably more just, hey, we want to streamline our stuff. Well, our, I would think it's outputs. more... I would imagine a lot of it, too, is you see Kevin Kelly and Don Callis. They're really or good. Kevin Kelly and Chris Charlton or, Chris, or and Kevin Rocky Kelly Romero and Rocky in Romero. There. And they're great. They're really good. They yeah. know the product inside and out. And it translates. And if you watch... Their commentary on a regular basis, and for the when they were doing the U.S. shows live, you had to watch uh, the Access crew. It's night and day. It is. It really is. It is night and day. I know. And just as regular viewers of the product, I want to hear Kevin Kelly and whoever his partner is. That's what I want to hear yeah. because they know the pro- know the product so well. I mean, Kevin Kelly is the voice of New Japan Pro Wrestling in my mind. Yeah. For for the English speaking audiences, he is the voice of New Japan. I agree, man. And agree. when you don't hear Kevin Kelly. Call on the New Japan show, it's, it's, it, it, it takes you out of it. It does. Especially when it seems like the commentary team doesn't really know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that time we were watching, we were packing, it was when we were doing yeah. Slayer shirts or show, whatever it was. Yeah, we were packing shirts up. And we were packing them and we were watching one of the shows, and it was on, it was an Axis broadcast, I think. And JR was on commentary, and we were just cracking up the entire time. Like, it's just, I don't know. And then you and I get together, and we're just doing JR's voice the entire time, and it's just funny. But, yeah. Oh, apparently JR just commented on it. He says, he clarif- this is a headline from WrestleZone. It's just business. Yeah, he says, just business. It's just business. It's just business. They're just, they're, do- they're doing business. New Japan Professional Wrestling. They're located in Japan, not to be confused with Old Japan. They're part of New Japan it's a different island. <laughs> no, it's not, JR. No. It's not. Uh, All right, that's what it is. he just tweeted. To clarify the speculation, my departure from Access has zero to do with New Japan. Are you, trying to, are you trying to play? Are you sound like a little bit of JR in there. No, I'm not trying to do anything. <laughs> and Or Mark Cuban's network. My contract ends at year's end, and I was unable to legally negotiate a new arrangement. So seemingly confirming what uh, WWE. Uh, Melser was saying, that WWE put an end. They're not going to let me do that. Yeah, they're gonna bring me back, so I can talk about Kyrie Saint. She's a she likes. She to, enjoys nautical pursuits. She she's a pirate. She's a pirate. She likes boating. She likes boats. The you high know, seas. You know who doesn't come off to to me as somebody who likes boats? Trevor, Trevor Lee. Lee. He seems very much to, to enjoy being landlocked. He likes being on terra firma. Yes. Uh, however, he will no longer be with Impact Wrestling. Apparently. PW Insider is reporting that TNA wrestling superstar Trevor Lee, who we are both big fans of. Oh, he's of. great. And if you've ever seen him at PWG, he wants to be referred to as TNA wrestling superstar Trevor Lee. The problem is, or Impact Wrestling Superstar. Now, yes. The problem is that doesn't have nearly the stigma that it did. But back when it did have a stigma. Oh, man, it was a heat magnet. It was a heat magnet. He shows up in PWG, the most anti-impact place know, there is I back know. then. And he Although shows up. The roster of Impact is 
Yeah, I know. I PWG know. PWG alum. Anyways, so he's now a good, or soon to be a former TNA wrestling superstar because apparently he's done with the company. Um, PW Insider adds, quote, we have confirmed with several sources there is WWE interest in bringing Lee into NXT. WWE is slated to announce several signings in January, so the timing syncs up. Lee's impact deal officially expires 1231. Um, I really like Trevor Lee, but oh, I, I'm really happy that if WWE snaps him up, I think that's, oh, Philip Prochaska ordered one of my comic books. Y'all can order my comic book. Um, that would make me so happy oh, heck yeah. to see him. That he, he belongs there. He is a tremendous character, tremendous wrestling talent. Yeah, he's fantastic. He's oh. only 25 years old. Oh, my God. He's only 25. Yeah, he's 25. He debuted in 2007, 11 years ago when he was 16 years old. No, when he was 24 years 14, 14 years old. You see, I'll do my math in my head yeah, as, we're I'm, old. as I'm it's, talking. It's tough. He was trained by Jeff Rudd, Jeff Hardy, and Matt Hardy. Yeah, he was involved in the Omega stuff back in the day, I guess. He was part of Omega Wrestling. Yeah. Omega Championship That would be wrestling. great to see Trevor Lee show up in NXT. Oh, my gosh. That'd be fantastic. 25? God. He'll probably end up on 205 Live, but he's awesome. So he would he would uh, inject some uh, oh, I'd be fine with that. renewed energy into 205 I'd be, Live. I'd be totally fine with that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How big is he? Well, he's six feet. What the, was his build weight? 215. Oh, okay. Well, maybe. So yeah, he'd be a, he'd be bigger there. But then what's his fat? I think that's isn't that the same build, like height and weight as uh, Canellas, or is Canellas? Oh yeah, then they said yeah, it was like six one two fifteen for Canellas. Yeah, I think. Uh, oh, Canellas says now it says five eleven two hundred. So he shrank right. two pounds, two inches, and dropped two 15 inches. Pounds. Yeah. Well, that's what they build Dolph at like two fifteen. Yeah, but that's cool. Look, man. 205 Live is hot right now. Yeah. I really like the wrestling there. They got it in front of a better crowd. Yeah. Because it's before SmackDown. Um, so I'm, I'm, I think 205 Live isn't a terrible destination. For a guy like Trevor Lee, especially now that we've seen some evidence that there could be some filtering up to the main roster, mm-hmm. that's totally fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Totally fine. Hopefully, he has an NXT run before oh, that happens, yeah. though. He'd be great in NXT. Uh, in other impact news, during uh, last night's show, which we'll get to results in a bit, two huge, huge, huge matches were announced for their next pay per view, Homecoming. Takes place early 2019. First, it's going to be a rematch for the Knockouts title between Taya and Tessa Blanchard. Taya also is going to be going, uh, she's going to be wrestling some stuff for um, AAA yeah. after they're like very, very. Yeah. Uh, big fallout. Yeah, so it's kind of. It seems like there's when someone has a falling out with AAA, they eventually come back. Mm-hmm. And then also, Brian Cage has cashed in option C. He's ca- he's cashing in his X division title nice. for a chance at the Impact World Title. Nice. Um, taking on Johnny Impact. Why are there no new Impact Wrestling yeah, ratings? Usually they're up by now. Actually, we usually do this later in the day, so maybe that's why. Maybe. Could be. Summer. So, Impact results. Steve, did you watch Impact this week? No. What did I do last bummer, night? Bummer, man. That's oh, we bummer. watched two episodes of Ozark last night. The season finale for season one and the first. Mm. E- no, it's but the, the two last episodes of the mm. season. Man, that's, a, that's an intense show. Heavy man. show? It's heavy. It's really good, but man, it's heavy. It gets me on edge. I can't handle it. You can't handle it? No. Can't handle it. However, okay. we do have Impact results. Uh, Tessa. Beat Ray Lynn with a DDT. And after that... I don't know who Ray Lynn is. I don't know either. After that, the the match with Taya was set up. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, LAX defeated Fala Ba and KM. That's not surprising. LAX are great. Yo, they're awesome. They're the best. They're awesome. Talk yeah. about dudes who can go to NXT any day. Oh, hell yeah. Johnny, uh, they're in the middle of contract season, too. I don't think... I think they're like... It's coming to an end, or Impact's trying to resign yeah, him or something. Yeah, I remember hearing that Impact was going to try to resign him, which would be smart of Impact. Johnny Impact beat Matt Seidel after Starship Pain. Of course, a devastating finish. You're not going to kick out of a Starship No, pain. I don't think anybody ever has. Uh, Sue Young defeated Heather Monroe. Sue, is Sue Young's finisher always a mandible claw? Maybe. Right. I don't know. I honestly don't know. And then Brian Cage defeated Sammy Callahan to retain the X Division title. So that's, it feels like maybe that was their blow off match. Unless Callahan comes out to screw Brian Cage out of a potential Impact World title win. That could be. I wonder, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't really paid attention. Uh, I paid attention like a little bit. I want to pay more attention, but man, it's just hard. Yeah, there's a lot going on. There's a lot going on. The, the thing, man, WWE, 
they're putting the screws to all the other places that I want to watch because they loaded me up with another hour of WWE UK. Oh my god, NXT UK. There's so much to watch. Here's the thing. I'm not going to miss NXT UK. It's literally the best thing on TV. I'm not talking about the best wrestling on TV. It's the best thing on TV. And they're doing two hours of it a week. I'll be sad when they dial it back down to an hour a week. I'll be so bummed out. I will be to a certain extent, but that's just a lot. No, man. It's four hours of wrestling to watch every Wednesday. I'll watch four hours of NXT it's, UK it's lot, every Wednesday. It's too much. It's too much. No way. Um, a follow-up on Joey Ryan's health. I think it was last week we talked about it, uh, at the end of the uh, MLW match he had. He announced that he may have a torn pectoral muscle. Mm-hmm. Confirmed via Joey himself. He does have a torn pectoral muscle and this is, is, is going to be uh, scheduled soon for surgery. In a tweet that included a link to his pro wrestling tea store, we should to- totally check out. Yeah. He's got some awesome designs. We've yep. met Joey. He's a great dude. Oh, he's the best. Um, he uh, dropped some some real medical lingo mm-hmm, mm-hmm. in describing the extent of his injuries. I'm going to try to read through this, and I'm going to not pronounce half these words correctly. Uh, the MRI, MRI revealed that I have an acute, acute tear. I know the word acute, and I even mispronounced that. Uh, the left pectoral major, including a high-grade tear of the clavicle, head at the myotendinous junction in a high-grade intratendinous tear of the sternal head with retraction and hemorrhage into the muscle belly. Oh, man. Disorganized fibers of the muscle tendon tear identified within the deltopectoral groove. The deltopectoral groove. It seems like it'd be easier to read this as JR. Yeah, it is. Check it out. The MRI revealed that I have an acute tear of the left pectoral major, including a high-grade tear of the clavicular head at the myotendinous junction wow, that's really good. and a high-grade intratendinous tear of the sternal head with retraction and hemorrhage into the muscle belly. Oh, hell, Disorganized one. fibers of the muscle tendon tear identified within the deltopectoral groove. The doctor has recommended surgery. I'm going to call and I'm to call the surgeon on Monday or Tuesday to set up an appointment to see them. The timetable yeah. for recovery will be determined. By the surgeon. My surgeon uh, enjoys nautical pursuits. But not a pirate. But he's not a pirate. He prefers fishing. Drinking rum. (laughs) (laughs) Drinking rum. Hopefully he doesn't see Dr. Dunch. If I were learning, if I learned one thing from the Pirates of the Caribbean's films, is that pirates drink rum. Oh, they're terrible people. Um, I'm the captain now. (laughs) (laughs) Um... Man, I've been listening to this podcast, Dr. Death. It's about oh, this about that, doctor yeah. named Doc. Like, literally, the first 20 minutes are so hard to listen to because it's a nurse recounting uh, spinal surgery that this <sighs> dude was doing. And, like, the doctor was all yelling at the nurses and stuff. I know what I'm doing. And he was like, he was like, yeah, dude. He'd start drilling a screw into the spine, and then he'd stop, and he'd start drilling in a different location, and then a different location. It's only supposed to drill once with one screw. It was just like, and then at the la- at finally he just said, "Well, she'll be fine." Oh my gosh! <laughs> Apparently, he literally threw his hands up and said loudly, "Well, she'll be fine." Woo! What was this doctor's name? Doctor Dunch. Oh, he's in prison now. I would hope so. That's how bad he was. Wow. Yeah, it's awful. Wow. He's in prison now because a terrible doctor killed a bunch of people. Terrible doctor at skills. So, yeah. Finish this question, Steve. All right. And the man of constant sorrow, Elias. <laughs> Discord club going over, baby. I don't even know what is that well, isn't mean. It, isn't it Discord club versus Friendo versus so this weekend for Survivor Series? So I've only heard that from Discord. Is Friendoverse even participating in that? Do they even know? Is anybody from Discord in Friendoverse as well? I don't know. Uh, Astro J5, speaking of Cody, did you see his father's last tweet? No. I heard, I think it's, where he speaks very highly of Becky Lynch. <gasps> Johnny Impact was voted off Survivor this week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard that too. Uh, Josh Lazo going to NXT Visalia tonight. That should be fun. Vas- that, that's a good, that's, that's a good. Uh, Chef dead inside. Happy Friday. <laughs> Chef. Chef dead inside. Happy Friday. Got the weekend off and just got paid. Time to get wasted and make some food. Time to go get, wa- are you going to get wasted and then? And then get some food? No, make some food. Make some food? Josh Lazo, last show I went to, Aries broke his orbital bone. Ouch. Emilio Hernandez is AJ Styles overrated in the year 2018. Consistently regarded as one of the best um, in the world. Context hasn't had nearly as great a year as Okada, Osprey, Becky Walter, or even L.A. Park. 
Um, part of that is not necessarily his fault. Like the creative for a lot of his feuds have not been good. Who um, are we talking about now? AJ. Has, is, is, oh. You regard him as overrated in the year 2018. So here's the thing. You need, I, I, I kind of think that <clears throat> your creative is inherently better if you're chasing something, mm-hmm. not if you're holding on to something. Mm-hmm. Um, I really think they dropped the ball by not having Shinsuke pick up that title mm-hmm. and play a little bit of hot potato. Mm-hmm. You can play a little bit of hot yeah, potato with Shinsuke. Anything. You get a great name on the lineage of the title. Um, and AJ gets to chase stuff. I think if that was the case, if that was the case, I think maybe we'd be saying something different about AJ. If they really gave a bit of a back and forth to AJ and Shinsuke, yeah, yeah, yeah. that might have been they the defining feud. Because after, yeah, never really, after the WrestleMania, it never really seemed like AJ was really in danger of losing that title. Yeah, totally. Mitchell Phillips started training as a wrestler last year. I've seen matches put together. It's really interesting to watch. Rampage is my coach, and he's a great mind. Oh, that's interesting. That's yeah. cool. That's really neat. W.S. Fletcher. Steve, guess what came in the mail when I got home? I'm going to read it tonight. Nice. Must be video, yeah? Yeah. He's yeah, gonna cool. Play. He's going to be like, what is this shit I just paid for? Uh, the Matt Star 007 got a massive hangers, hangover, so you guys are the perfect cure. Keep up the great, good work. Ooh. Guys, love you. Hangovers you. are nothing to mess with, man. You. Uh, let's see here. Oh, man, this is great. Lucas Coward Marshall going to WSW Wrestling Australia. Next. WSW? W Steve W? That's in Australia? Oh, uh, World gimmick. Series Wrestling. Oh. Uh, next week, which of these would you like most for an intro? So here are the choices here. Wait, sorry, read again. Which of these wrestlers All right. would you like most for an intro? Brandy Rhodes, Cody Rhodes. I, don't th- I doubt they would do it. I doubt that they would do an intro. Probably not. I think there's some people who are like a little too high on the food chain to do intros. Robbie Eagles, who's now... Uh, Any part of Bullet Club? Yeah, he's Bullet Club now. Marty Skrull, Flip Gordon, Adam Brooks, Bandido, Jonah Rock, Austin Aries, Brian Cage. Oh, Walter. Well, he doesn't do it. Somebody asked. One of our friendos asked him at PWG. Well, that's all the more reason I want. And Slex. That's all the more reason I want him to do it because he said no. Austin Aries. It's a hundred percent awesome. Are you kidding me? More so than Cody and Brandy. Do you remember when he when a friendo went to his cigar thing? Yeah, it's got to be Cody, Cody and Brandy. Yeah, it's Cody and Brandy, but Austin Aries would be pretty funny. That'd be interesting. <laughs> oh man, yeah, Marty would be good. Yeah, Cody, Marty would Brandy, be good. whoever Slex is, that'd be cool too. Look at Slex. I'd be down with Slex or Jonah Rock. That's all good. I don't care. Anybody. I'll take any of them. Yeah. I got it. In the new year. So in the new year, <clears throat> we're going to take the intros that we have now and split them up amongst. We're going to have an intro for the Monday. Here, here's the thing. All the intros, except for the Saturday uh, non WWE show, they're all going to start with Undisputed Era. That, that, that's not going to change. That's Undisputed. The rest of the intros that we have right now and that super long intro that we have are going to be cut, are going to yes. be div, uh, divvied up between... Yes. The, the new shows on Monday and Friday, and the then recap the recaps. Shows, yeah. So there's going to be two intros using all those. Yeah. And then I've been collecting all these other intros from people going out to indie shows. Have we gotten any more of late? Not really. So, but we haven't really talked about True. it. True. Um, I figure once we debut that new intro for the Saturday show. And that we get more submissions. So if you guys go to any indie shows... If and and just politely ask if they can do an intro. If not, not a big deal. Yeah, make sure make sure you're cool and don't approach them when it's obvious that they're not in it. But like if they're you know they're with their family, if they're eating dinner, just be. They're cool. sitting in the movie theater. Leave them alone. Just be cool. If at the right time and there's opportunity, go up. Be cool. Say yeah. hey. Yeah. Is this possible? If they say no, say no. Nah, can't do it. Be cool. Yeah. Weird. Uh, so this is kind of interesting. Dragon Reborn said thoughts on impact stealing true buds gimmick and giving it to the rascals. So the rascals are going to be making like sort of a big impact debut. There's a sort of re debut. Yeah. Yeah. D but, um, the butt. And they did a thing where I only saw like a little tiny bit of it, but they're like sort of ripping off the, that 70s show oh, where right. they're in the, in the basement smoking weed. Uh-huh. Um, and it's basically true buds. Oh, wow. Um, I I'm fine with I have more of a I have less of a problem with them ripping off True Buds than I do them ripping off that '70s show. 
Yeah. I like that 70s show, and that thing that they do is so iconic, or that thing that they did was so yeah, iconic yeah, yeah. that, like, I don't like when people just rip off no, I agree. that stuff, you know? I mean, didn't Mike Awesome rip off that gimmick, that 70s guy? It was terrible. It was awful. Excellence of Flexecution. Is there a friend of meetup before and or after takeover? I believe there is. Is anybody who out there is organizing some sort of meetup at takeover? We will not be there. We're not going to be there. We're going to be back there live streaming our reactions. But if you are there and you're, you, you want to endeavor to organize a meetup, tweet at us. We'll spread the word um, and, and try to get a good turnout. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wayne Maker, Will Ospreay is realistically not going to WB. He claims to have insider info. Ooh. If he did, what would be his ceiling? In, Top. Insider. Is, is his insider Top. info he just watches when Ospreay goes live on Facebook Live? Maybe. I think that's his insider info. Maybe. But he's top. Straight to the top. Will Ospreay's great. I mean, it's top. Yeah. That his ceiling is top. Yeah. It's the very top There's of the like ceiling. There's like not a ceiling. No. There's no ceiling. No ceiling. I mean, his ceiling is this. He probably won't ever own the company. No. But that's probably. That's maybe. I wouldn't rule it out entirely, though. I mean, it's probably like... Fifty one forty nine, yeah, he does. Yeah, you can't rule it out entirely. <laughs> you can't rule it out. Um, you have a question, uh, That's Jazz right. Keegan. Uh, which wrestlers had the most success after they've left WWE? It's Cody, right? It is Cody. It is Cody. Yeah, it's Cody. Cody. Yeah, unless you want to say Drew, but then he just came back. Yeah, it's Cody. It's Cody, though. Uh, Zach asked, if Sinclair bought New Japan, combined it with Ring of Honor, and had great presentation on Nationwide Network, could they rival WWE? No, because Sinclair has yet to sh- prove and they will invest any real money in the product in Ring of Honor in terms of, of, of upping the production. Boy, that was funny. <laughs> and Sinclair CEO was talking about Ring of Honor. is obvious that was the first no time he'd actually paid attention. Uh, Matt at Lost the Camera asks, who do you think the first New Japan Pro Wrestling opponent for Bastard Pox going to be? Is, 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 like, is, is this question in reference to something that I'm not aware no, of? No, no, no. Yeah, okay. Because he's okay. making the rounds in the UK. Yeah, he's yeah, making yeah. the rounds there. But that's got to be a thing eventually. Yeah. New Japan. Uh, I mean, it probably won't be Osprey. Really? I think the perfect opponent would be Kushida. Yeah, I was going to say Kushida. Because Kushida seems like su- such innocence. And he's, he's the ace. He's the ace of he's the, the junior ace. division, man. He's all about Back to the Future. Yeah. He just seems like pure. And Bastard Pac is just <laughs> it's hate a pure and saltiness anger. <laughs> and resentment. <laughs> Bastard Pac. Bastard Pac. God, I wish that was his actual ring, like he would call oh, it. I know. His ring name. I know. Coming to the ring now, Bastard Pac. <laughs> oh, that'd be so funny. You shits. <laughs> Uh, Michael Valdez, what will Ring of Honor landscape look like in 2019? It's going to have like five wrestlers It could there. be pretty barren, man. <laughs> <laughs> tumbleweed yep. fights Tumbleweed. Yep. Yep. Coming, to the, coming to the ring now, Tumbleweed. I mean, it, they'll have Jeff Cobb at least. It's going to be that CEO it's gonna be of Jeff Sinclair. Cobb. It's going to be CEO, Jeff Cobb, Jay Lethal. <laughs> Jay Lethal's definitely going to be there. Beer City Bruiser. <laughs> The Briscoes, because yeah. they're not going anywhere. They're, not, go- <laughs> they're not going anywhere. <laughs> and the kingdom. And cheeseburger. And cheeseburger. Oh, man. And then sometimes bastard Pac. Uh, Christopher Rampersad, who will Cody face at, I guess, Wrestle Kingdom for the U.S. title? I think Juice challenged him for it. Juice. I think he did. Yeah. Is there a... Is there a- I don't think it's listed, but I think, I think, I think Juice... Challenge him for the U.S. Yeah, I think that's the case. As Obazo, if uh, the Kazarian and Daniels were to go to WWE, power rank, who you'd want to see them face? Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I'd be I'd be really interested to see them work. So let's start with NXT. You're right about that. Um, in I'm NXT, era. that'd be great. Uh, yeah, it would be great. But I like. Yeah, you're right. That'd be great. But I like because they probably have fought them already, like Redragon. Oh, probably. Yeah. I'd like to see them work with the younger guys, like Street Profits, mm-hmm. and because those dudes could learn so. That's oh, the that's yeah. the main heck thing yeah. with them. They could learn so yeah. much. Uh, what's their faces? Heavy machinery. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see that. Um, Justin Tolentino, first longtime fan since ten for the win. First time asking a question. Looking for good matches to watch. That's not WWE. Anything with a good story being told in the ring. Any suggestions? Yeah, uh, a lot of New Japan stuff. 
Okada Omega, Okada Omega, Okada Omega, and, and Okada, Okada Omega. Yeah. Um, if you can get your hands on it, watch uh, Leo Rush's PWG debut in a match against Ricochet. It's yeah, you might see us in the in the audience yeah. too. That's yeah, that. Uh, only kings understand each other. Yeah, what the show was called. Uh, Dan Toxic Mischief asks. So with rumors coming out about Impact's next television home, uh, or lack thereof, where do you think they'll end up? Lack thereof? Parts uh, unknown? Uh, tape trading. <laughs> <laughs> you got to look in the back of Pro Wrestling <laughs> Illustrated. <laughs> you buy the tapes or trade. Uh, <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have my, my, my best of Shawn Michaels tapes anymore, so I can't tra- so make copies that. and tape the, and, and trade those. For impact. For impact, man. Um, Pluto TV, they have an impact whole channel there. It's Why true. don't they just put their first one? Probably doesn't make any money for impact. It doesn't on make anything, probably. We should get a Pluto TV channel. We have enough content. Oh, I know we, we do. We have a huge back catalog. I know. Of us rambling for an hour. Uh, the Real Slow Wolf is Bullet Club the reason New Japan has grown over the last three years like the NWO did for WCW. You know, we should think of that. Uh, you know, Funhouse has their Funhouse TV. Yeah. You know how we're sort of compiling for that thing we're doing? Yeah. All the yeah, yeah, yeah. evergreen stuff? Mm-hmm. I wonder if we could do something similar to like a Funhouse TV where it's always could. running. Always on. I wonder if Twitch would be cool with I that. I just don't know what kind of infra- infrastructure we would need to make that happen. OBS and like a computer. <laughs> I have honestly, I don't know. Yeah. I, I honestly, I think that like maybe with OBS, you can just load them all up. Yeah, maybe, and, and this, then have they'd play run. one right after the other. Yeah, be. but just in the beginning of every day, you'd have to make sure you up you. Well, here's what we would do: at like the end of like we would have like for twelve hours it runs, and then at like two in the morning until we get in at like ten or whatever, it's like color ooh, bars, color bars. Yeah. <laughs> We do color bars. We don't stop it. No, we color don't stop bars. the stream. Just color bars. The Universal Jones says blue boner gum lasts. Was indeed a good afternoon. Oh my god, that's way too much info. That's so much. In- that's, that's way too, too much. much info, man. Too much. But I'm, I'm glad that's good. Um, Josh Little wants to uh, know what is the likelihood that Brian Cage. Would end up in WWE and power rank his first five. He was opponents. in developmental for a while, so he's kind of an interesting case because he's definitely way up there in terms of independent talents. Yes. He's way up there. However, he also, in an interview not that long ago, seemed kind of put off by the idea that WWE wanted to bring him in for a tryout. Yeah, because he's like, I've been doing this forever. You want me to try? You want to try me out? Well, he was in developmental before, wasn't Look he? Look at YouTube. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, he was doing like the. Wolverine type thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just sort of agreeing with you right now. I thought he was. Um, So, I mean, you would think that at some point they'd be like, yeah, bring him on in. But, you know, it kind of depends on if he has some sort of maybe chip on his shoulder with WWE or doesn't want to start off. Yeah, he's in Florida Championship Wrestling. Okay. 2008, 2009. 2000. Oh, I was 10 years ago. According to Wikipedia, he's billed from Sacramento. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. He was born in Fresno. Does he live here? I don't know. Brian Cage. Brian! Brian! Hey! Didn't say anything. I guess not. It's not here, man. Then again, we're in Fair Oaks. Uh, Shall I open this? Oh, yeah, man! Should open that at the beginning of the show. I keep on forgetting about it. It's just sitting over there. This is going to make my day, isn't it? Yeah, man. Very excited about this. I am, too. You're fi- finally, finally, finally part of the team. The proud owner now. Oh, look at that! Of a Deuce and Mo podcast shirt. This be my favorite one. Congratulations! We'll have to twin every day. Yes, we will. That's thank, fantastic. Thank you so much, Deuce and Mo. They reached out. They saw that I was very happy with my shirt and how disappointed you were with your shirt, with your lack of shirt. They said we're going to send them one. And I said, yeah. Thank you so, so much. Thank that's you. Awesome. We should have them on the show sometime. I know. We need to have them on the show. Yeah, they're great. Absolutely. They we are need great. To, we, need to, we need to start building up our own family of people out here that yes. we can get together with. Uh, Damon Cruz was watching some old shoot interviews and wondering who was your favorite shoot interview and who would you want to have one later? Oh, Kevin Nash is the best interview in all of wrestling. Yeah. Hands down. Yeah, it's Kevin Nash. Shoot, not shoot. Yeah. Just any sort of interview. If you have Kevin Nash, it's going to be entertaining. It's the best. It like there isn't there's I mean, 
Yeah, there's no there's no other good answer. There's a, I mean, yeah, no, it's Kevin Nash. Like uh, Cornette's good. X Pac is actually pretty good. X Pac is really good. But Kevin Nash is the best. It's Kevin Nash. Boy, he's good. Yeah. And they bring him on like uh, seemingly daily. <laughs> it, talk about hey, number one dude. Number one dude, I'm disappointed that he doesn't have a podcast. Yeah, I know. Is Kevin Nash. Oh man. He could clean up. Yeah. All sorts of One of my favorite episodes. Gum. One of my favorite episodes of the Stone Cold one is is the Uber Facts episode yeah. with Kevin Nash. Yeah. They just shoot the shit for an hour and it's great. I know, it's great. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, we'll finish with this. Tim Maloney uh, here in regular chat says, even though Roman's... Oh, wait, I forgot about Discord. I'll get to Discord in a second. Even though Roman's real situation is very heartbreaking, needs a lot of attention, do you think he watches WWE? Do you know, uh, uh, you know watch to, watch his, his, to watch his friends and keep his mind off shit? I wouldn't be surprised. It wouldn't surprise me. I wouldn't be surprised. No reason not. I mean, he probably should keep up. Yeah. Um, let's see here. If anybody in Discord tagged us... It's just all them yapping at each other here. All right. Man, I'm supposed to be their Intercontinental Champion, but they're not like... They're not... Well, that's when I posted the thing, right? That was here. yesterday. Oh, yeah. All right, then. Well, that's the show. Wait, that's weird. Hold on. No, hold on a second. Oh, that's weird. So you got that one. Anything else? Anything else? All right. Obi-Wan Jabroni says, Steve's about to look. Don't mess this up. All right, I'll give them... Given that, that yeah. I am, this is probably the last show where I'm going to be their ick, ick champion. Yeah, they have 60 seconds. They have 60 seconds. It's a great way to end the week here. I don't see, this is why, this is the, RJ Meltzer says, over under nine for Vince. I've heard that before. I don't know what it means. Is it a meme of some sort? I don't know. Please explain. You guys have 30 seconds left. See, this is why we need more dollar patrons to fill the Discord with people who are going to give us real questions. Time's up. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, there's some people typing. Oh, well, come on. This, there's like four people typing. I'm just trying to reference Wrath the Con, man. Time's up. Because he does this. Time's up. He's like, <laughs> he he's counting, counting in his head. He's actually counting. This is what they give us. Best taco place? Del Taco. See y'all later. Bye, everybody. Where's the music? We don't even, we're not even going to do music. Yeah. Bye, everybody.